It was a wild night at Tri-County Speedway on Saturday. The two championship contenders got into a huge wreck that caused a massive pileup in the Pro Late Model Series. You can see here, uh, this was the point standings going into the race at Tri-County. Caden Quaffle had a four-point lead over Katie Hettinger. And uh, as the race was winding down, uh, we had a late race restart. Caden Quaffle started uh, underneath Katie Hettinger. Katie Hettinger had the, um, she was leading the race going into the restart. And the two got into each other. Uh, let's take a look at that right here over at Flow Racing. Just a nose up top. They nearly touch once again off of turn number two. Quaffle try. You can see there, Quaffle has a pretty good run. He's got uh, about a half a car length ahead of Hettinger. Hettinger comes back on the outside there. She's really running that top lane. Gets a good run going in. Then Quaffle obviously gets loose, runs in, hits her. They they bang doors. She's into the wall. Everyone's just absolutely wrecking. Massive pile up. You can't even get through there. Uh, what do we got? Like 10 cars just sitting right there. Two, four, six, eight um, involved. It looks like some here, some went. And here's another look at it again. Quaffle has a pretty good, pretty good restart. He's doing really well. Again, half car length there coming out of the turn. Turn four there. Going into turn one, Hettinger gets the run. They're still side by side. She gets really good. Quaffle obviously loose, runs up the track, runs right into her. And she's really got nowhere to go and is just kind of taken out and wrecked. Uh, Quaffle would actually be sent to the rear of the field. He was punished for that, saying the car store seemingly thinks that he indeed caused that wreck and was sent to the rear of the field. Uh, upon the next restart, Hettinger decided to get revenge and wreck him. So we'll see the camera here. This is the restart. There you go. There's the wreck. You can see them both. Uh, Quaffle's up in the wall. Hettinger's down low. I'm sure we'll get the, re the replay here. Um, Quaffle's going back onto the track. Hettinger's night, I think, would be done. Yeah, let's skip forward a little bit. We got some confrontation happening in the pits between the two teams. Car store officials getting in there in the gray in the gray suits, trying to keep them apart. We got the police are there as well. Hendrix lost her hood. Still some words being exchanged down there in the pits with the police there. Looks like things have calmed down. Police are kind of walking off. And then it looks like Hettinger's going over to the Quaffle pits there. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, where she was going, it, she was obviously parking in the pits there. That looks like, it, I don't know if that was her team or the Quaffle team. Hard to tell. Everyone's wearing black there. Um, but uh, Quaffle would actually do make it back up to uh, fourth uh, and then move into third on the, like, the last restart. Uh, and then Ashton Higgins here and uh, Bichelle get into each other. So let's take a look at this, uh, racing for the lead on the last lap. So you see there, Bichelle diving deep. Higgins has the run on the outside. The outside lane is the preferred lane here at Tri-County. He's already getting into him uh, on the bottom there, running him up, and then he just kind of dive bombs him and, and just takes him out. Uh, like There's zero intention of trying to race him clean there and just hits him in the rear and wrecks him. Uh, the car tour would disqualify Bichelle, and Quaffle would actually be awarded the win, given the fact that he finished in third. Uh, so a lot of people were not happy about that. There were boos raining down from the stands. Uh, like, it was uh, some wild things were happening. And then after this, we do see Higgins kind of run down the track here and attack uh, Bichelle's car here. There he goes. He's got out of his car. He's running down the track. He leaps the wall. He then bangs on the, bangs on the windshield there. He gives him some words. People are there. Police are telling them to get back on the track, get away. And uh, all kind of all hell kind of breaks loose here. Uh, just a massive melee ensues uh, between Higgins crew and one would assume Bichelle's crew here. Let's see if we can skip ahead. Yeah, here we go. See, people are uh, people get take laying in cheap shots. Just all kind of hell breaking loose here. Just massive, massive brawl. People being uh, Higgins is back in there. He's back in trying to separate people. Police are there trying to push him away. I mean, this car store officials getting in there with the gray helmets. Just all kinds of mayhem. Police finally breaking it up. 
just just wild craziness happening uh, down here after the race. Um, we do have another look at this. Let's take a look here. This is from Ryan Vargas over on on um, on X. We've got a really good look. Got to say, Michelle's pretty smart to just stay in the car there. I mean, just, just, just awful behavior here. Um, I get tempers are hot and stuff like that, but just uh, have some like self-respect. Just have some humility. I mean, this guy just like charges. Someone tackles him. You got people taking cheap shots of people on the ground, and one guy's dropping hammer fists back there. Just awful, terrible behavior from these people. It's good the police got Higgins out of there, though. They were pretty smart. They are like, what are you doing, kid? Get out of here. <laughs> I'm pushing it back off into the track. Uh, here's another look from the Pit Wall podcast. Let's take a look here. These guys are just stupid. The police are right there. Like, don't even, what are they even thinking? Just absolute insanity uh, from these people here. So they finally get it calmed down. But I did want to go over to this here too, because um, Carson Quaffle does kind of explain over here on Flow Racing. He explains kind of what happened, and we're going to take a listen and see what he has to say here. What happened, obviously. Uh, we got put to the back before the race, um, started dead last, worked our way up to about third, uh, and we had a yellow with I don't know how many to go, probably 20 or so. Um, put ourselves in position really good there. Obviously, was able to get the lead for a couple laps. Me and Katie got together. Um, obviously, it wasn't intentional. It's not like I put her in the fence when we both wrecked. We banged the wheels. It's just how we hit. Um, if, we if I would have hit her door, I would have got loose. She would have drove away with the lead. It's just how we hit. It's not like I did on purpose. So I was already loose coming off. That restart, I just didn't fire it off as good. But, I mean, we hit wheels, banged wheels, and we both just headed for the inside wall. There was really nothing we could have done from there. Um, and obviously, it caused a big wreck, so I apologize to everyone that got in it because it wasn't intentional. Um, it was hard racing for the lead right there. But um, then I got put back to the rear, even though I, I really didn't think we should have. Uh, I felt like it wasn't – I never stopped. Obviously, I wasn't involved in the wreck. Um, but we got put to the back, um, got dumped by her on the restart. I figured something was going to happen. Her – Wait, wait, he said he wasn't involved. He was totally involved in the wreck. I don't know what he's talking about there. He definitely was involved in the wreck. Uh, his car, like, spun out. He said he spun out into the inside wall. He was definitely involved in the wreck. So uh, he definitely should have been uh, gone to the rear. It looks like I was actually wrong earlier. Uh, I thought they sent him to the rear for causing the wreck. They just sent him to the rear for being involved in the wreck is what he's saying. Uh, so that is interesting uh, to hear that. But he definitely was involved in the wreck um, for sure. Spotter was still mine that she's going to wreck me or whatever. But... Um, got wrecked on the restart, came back again, was able to get back up to, I think, third in the last corner, and then the leaders wrecked. Um, they credited me with the win because I guess it was intentional. But, um, I mean, crazy night. Obviously, a lot of wrecked cars, a lot of damage. None of it was planned, obviously. I feel bad for everyone that got in the wreck because it was obviously a racing deal. Even, I mean, all the fans think it wasn't, but I would know because I was the driver of the car that got winning some of the damage. So, um, I mean, a good night, though. Came out in victory lane. I can't thank my team enough. Highlands Motorsports, Core Parts, Lake Lakedown Mechanical, uh, Concord Wealth Partners, Terry Realty Group, and the whole team. So that's what Caden uh, Quaffle had to say. Uh, I don't know if I really believe him. He definitely was involved in that wreck, so he's a little bit uh, confused about that, maybe. I don't know, or he clearly doesn't think that he was involved in the wreck when he he just he seems to have admitted that he was involved in the wreck, and then he's saying he wasn't involved in the wreck. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, as for it being a racing deal, I actually kind of buy that. I think he's probably right on that. I think that uh, he was racing really hard. He obviously got loose and he, and he went up and he hit her. Um, so, and they, and they wrecked and that, and that's what happened. And, and Hettinger wasn't really pleased with it. Um, they were racing for a championship. A lot was on the line. She was looked like the, the one to beat out there and, uh, took her out. Uh, so she wasn't happy with it either. Uh, but I'll leave it to you guys. What did you think about all of this mayhem during the pro late model race for the cars tour, uh, on Saturday? Do you believe Caden Quaffle's story? Do you think it was actually a racing deal? Uh, do you think he should have been penalized by going to the back because he was involved in the wreck? And then what do you make about Ashton Higgins and, uh, Bichelle there getting involved with each other at the end? I definitely think Bichelle did that on purpose with Higgins. Higgins should have won that race, uh, the way it played out. 
and and Bichelle just totally just ran in right into him to wreck him uh, on purpose and had no other intentions whatsoever. He was not trying to uh, race him clean. He went in there to wreck him, and indeed he did. Um, so with Quaffle finishing third, finishing third, and then uh, or at least. He finished second, I guess, because Higgins never crossed the finish line. And then Bichelle getting uh, DQ'd. He probably should have been awarded that uh, second place or being awarded that first place finish after finishing second. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about all of this mayhem uh, at the Car Store Pro Late Model Division race at Tri-County.